first of the shegurim given by the web yeshiva uh, in order to enhance our appreciation of uh, Pesach. Now, Pesach is special because it demands of us a tremendous amount of participation. We can't just roll into Pesach. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure if you heard the, whatever I said up to now, but uh, generally speaking, uh, the overwhelming aspect of Pesach has more to do with telling the story than it has to do with cleaning. Cleaning is difficult, and we certainly appreciate all those who participate in the cleaning air of Pesach. But the mitzvah of Pesach, as far as we are concerned, since there's no sacrifice that we can give, is the Sipur Yitziat Mitzvah. We have to tell the story. I'm not sure that any of us have ever told another story. I'm sorry for the difficulties. Uh, we're interested in finding out what it means to tell the story. What does it mean to tell the story? But the story is written up in the Haggadah. We can just read the Haggadah, some faster, some slower. Not such a immeasurable enterprise or undertaking. So I said, let's look first at the Psukim at the beginning of the parasha of Bo. Now, you remember that the book of Shemot, the first half of the book of Shemot is about the exodus from Egypt and the receiving of the Torah at Har Sinai. The second half of the book of, of uh, Shemot is about building the Mishkan, the tabernacle. So let's go back to the first half. The first half is about Yitziat Mitzrayim, Shemot, Va'era, Bo. Those three parashiyot include the ten plagues that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought on to the Egyptians. So the Pasuk says, We have Hashem and Moshe, Boel Paro, come to Paro, Aki, Ani Echbadeti et Libo et Leib Abadar. So this is like a, 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 an issue. If God hardens the heart of Paro, then why is Paro a player? What, what difference does it make? He has no free will, no choice. I hardened his heart. In order that the, the, the plagues, the, the, the miracles of the ten plagues should be in his midst. In other words, we don't want him, it sounds like we're saying, we don't want him to we don't want him to change his mind and let you go. We want him to suffer the weight of all ten plagues. I hardened his heart's heart and the hearts of his servants. In order that all of these otot, all of these signs and miracles should be within him. Therefore, the, the Torah is telling us that the story, or a story that you could tell, is the story of the plagues. There were plagues, and none of the plagues convinced, none of the plagues convinced Paro. There were plagues, he wasn't convinced. Pasuk Bet, Uleman tisaper baznei bincha ubendet bincha et asher italalti b'mitzrayim. Uleman. The first word in the second pasuk is leman amaz. In order that. I mean, something is happening in order that. You can tell the story. You can tell your son, your grandson, 
what HaKadosh Baruch Hu did in Mitzrayim. In other words, Paro has a role in reestablishing the faith of Am Yisrael in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that faith is, uh, is established through the miracles of the Ten Plagues. <clears throat> in order that you should tell the story of Oznei Bencha or Ben Bencha, this is the purpose that somehow the people of Israel are going to understand something. They're going to understand what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing. This is a kind of a difficult, a difficult idea. But HaKadosh Baruch is doing something and, and Moshe Rabbeinu is aware of that. Leman tisaper, and that's in order that should be a story to tell. So the story that you tell is a story that has something to do with the ten plagues. Right? It hit alalti b'mitzrayim. It alalti means I caused to happen. It was clear that Hashem did these plagues in Mitzrayim. And, and, and all of these signs, these miracles, which I brought down upon them. So you see that the story of Sipur Yitzhak Mitzrayim is not just about Jews leaving Mitzrayim, but the story is a story about understanding how did the Jews get to be understanders? How was it possible that through Yitziat Mitzrayim they came to the position that Avraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov had to understand what it meant that there was a God who created the world? I mean, this is something part of Yitziat Mitzrayim. That's what it says in the Pasuk. Well, it says in the Pasuk, but now I go back a step. I told you that the parashiyot of Shemot and Va'era and Bo are the parashiyot of the birth of Moshe Rabbeinu, the exodus from Egypt, the ten plagues, right? Shemot, Va'era, Bo. But if we look more carefully, we see that Bo is the parasha of the last three plagues that have not yet been given. Whereas Va'era is the parasha of the first seven plagues that have already been given. So these psukim that we just read, Pasuk 1 and Pasuk 2 from parasha of Bo, those psukim, those could come in between the seven plagues and the three plagues. So I could imagine if I was telling the story, I would say that the people lived through the plagues in Egypt. They saw what was happening to the Egyptians and they said, why? Why is this happening? <laughs> so that there is this constant feature of human existence that last year's stories are not good enough for this year. Not good enough. Because whatever we thought we understood last year, we still don't understand. And since we still don't understand it, by Paro, by Yomru Elav, again, Paro is just there to enable me to understand. And Paro was unable to get to that level on his own. And so Paro became Ichbadati at Libo. But we are, I'd call him Hashem Rim. We are the God of the Hebrews. So there's a story that we can squeeze out of these psukim. We may not be able to get it all or to understand it perfectly, but there is nevertheless a possibility that we would understand. Now, the first pasuk that we read, first, I'm sorry, the second pasuk that we read, Laman Lusit, Mantisapeba's Nei Bincha, Uben Bincha, is a kind of emphasis that's placed in the pasuk 
about education. It's a, a parent's a parent's obligation, and it seems clear to educate his children or her children according to the principles that they have adopted. So the pasuk says, "Lemante saper baznei bincha oben bincha your son, your grandson." That which God has wrought upon Mitzrayim, right? God wrought upon uh, Mitzrayim. Vet ototai, and what have I wrought? These signs, these plagues, these miracles. Samtibam v'yedatem ki ani Hashem, and this will lead to a clearer understanding. Well, how do we do that? How do we? tell our children something that will impress them so profoundly that they will know so in that pasuk it says and you know Chazal realized that there was a problem so how can you how can you give a directive to teach your son and your grandson isn't it true that they're not all the same. Not everybody's son is the same as everybody else's son. And not everybody's grandson is the same as everybody else's grandson. So the Haggadah, which attacks this question, says as follows. Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu starts off with praise of Hashem. Baruch Shalatan Torah L'Amo Yisrael Baruch Hu. Now this is uh, Introduction seems like kind of very nice, but not quite on the mark that we are talking about. In other words, before we learn Torah, and learning Torah is the way that has that we have designed our fulfillment of the mitzvah of Sipu Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Let's learn Torah. But before we really learn Torah, then, well, well, before we get deeply into it, we have a problem. How, how do we imagine that all the children are responsive to the story that I'm going to tell them? So the Haggadah says, to abanim Dibra Torah. The Haggadah says, yeah, it's true. The children are all different one from the other, and they deserve to be treated as though they were special and different. So, okay, that's very good. You know, I was reading a psychology textbook, and they told me about different types of personalities, and they called one Chacham and one Rasha, but one we don't really expect all of these different kinds of personalities to appear at the table that I'm sitting at. So it must mean, it must mean that wh whoever is there, whoever's at the table, if he's a Chacham, okay. If he's a Rasha, okay. Tam. What is She'eno Yodeh Lish'ol? In any event, the Gemara then goes on, the Gemara and then the Haggadah, quoting the Gemara says each of these four types of of children are mentioned in the Haggadah or in the Torah meaning where is the Chacham mentioned in the Torah so the Pasuk says Maha Eidot Vachukim Vamishpatim Eidot Chukim Mishpatim are uh, different kinds of halachic demands of us. We have to do. We have to do the eidot. We have to do the chukim and the mishpatim. Asher tziba Hashem elokeich elokai nu etchem. Ah, what a molo keilchot a pesach. So the chacham, no matter what he said, he said. Eidot, Chukim, Mishpatim, and he shows you he's into it. He knows what's going on. He's been learning seriously. The Torah is is part of him. He says, 
Emolok il chota pes tell him other halachot. I mean, that's where he is. That's where he's standing. And ein maftira machar pesach apikoman refers to the end of the seder. Ein maftira after the korban pesach, you don't need anything, not even apikoman. Okay, that's a chacham. Rasha mahu omer. So the, the Gemara explains that as being, he said, he said, uh, what are you doing? He meant, what are you doing? I mean, I'm not doing it. I just came home from, you know, having a good time and I showed up in, in my old home and uh, my parents are there, but I don't really relate to them so well or to, well, the fish would see at that moment, Haklal, Kafar Baikar, he excluded himself. He said, I'm not part of the, I'm not part of it. So, Kafar uh, Baikar, he denies the essence of the Jewish people, which is, again, the story in Bo, the story about the miracles. The story that explains to us what we're doing on this night. Vavata, Avata, the Hadrada says, Hakeyat Shinab. You have to treat him like a wayward child. Emolo Bavuza Sashem Li Bitsaitim Yitzrayim. You have to tell him that Pesach relates to the people who continue the original. Uh, the the original acceptance by Am Yisrael of the leadership of Akadosh Baruch Hu Ba'olam Olam Azeh leave the low low he's excluded Ilu Ayasham Lo Ayanigal that's a really difficult thing to say but that's what we say because sometimes the Russia doesn't realize the implications of his Rishut. So that's what the Haggadah says. You have to tell him that there are implications. That it's not, you can't just choose anything you want. Being born Jewish, that creates a whole wealth of, of obligations. And if you don't accept that obligation, then it says, Ilo Yasham Lo Nigal. Tam Mahu Omer. We're up to Tam. Mazo Tam, he doesn't sort of really know what's going on. Because of Gadot Tzian Hashem in Mitzrayim, he beit avadim. So you give him the easy part. The easy part was that God acted uh, definitively with power and took us out of Mitzrayim. And the fourth son, Sheino Yodei, the Shoi doesn't know how to ask. Bad Patai he just sits there, dumbfounded by what's going on. I know your daily show that Patachlos you you should start the conversation. Shinema we gotta tell Vincha by Yoma is a posuk. You have to tell your son on that day. I mean, you can't wait for him to ask. So the Pasuk in the beginning of Apo, which says that you have to tell the story to your son and your grandson, etc. That would seem to be a kind of a simple, straightforward activity. Wouldn't be very difficult, but the Haggadah makes it into something extremely difficult because Haggadah says, look at the different kinds of children. And the different kinds of children have a different way of appreciating what's going on. And if they don't appreciate, they also don't appreciate in different ways. The Rasha, after all, he's really, uh, you know, the, uh, an unsuccessful child. But the Shev, the Tam, he's different. He says, Mazot, he says, what are you doing? 
what's the point? I mean, he's missing a lot. He doesn't know the background. He doesn't know. He's missing a lot. Then I go back to my original question. Does this mean that we have to look for people like that to have at our table? If we sit down to make a seder, do we have to find a young man who's a chacham, another one who's a rasha? That seems to be, that seems to be odd. That seems to be an odd idea. So I once uh, was thinking about, uh, I, I would say I was once thinking about this uh, issue, the issue of the four sons. And, and, and I think that modern psychology has indicated different ways that whatever you think about yourself, whatever you think about yourself, you may be, it may not be unreasonable to look at yourself as a composite of personalities. Like everybody knows that sometimes they get overly excited or angry or uh, overly confident or like, you know, they, you, you are made up of what seems to be reasonable stuff. But also beyond that, beyond that, you've got some unreasonable stuff in you. So it says, isn't there, is there anybody who doesn't see themselves as being a chacham? Is there anybody who doesn't see themselves sometimes as being a rasha? Not always, but sometimes. Sometimes you say the wrong thing. Sometimes you do the wrong thing. Is there anybody who doesn't see themselves sometimes as a tam? A tam who says, what's going on? Doesn't want to get involved. Doesn't want to participate. And sometimes the shein all your daily show is like, I just want to make, to make believe that I do know the answer by not answering the question. It's something that happens all the time. So, Keneged Arba Abba Nem Dibra Torah. The Haggadah says, Echad Chacham, Echad Rasha, Echad Tam. So, especially the Rasha, that bothered me. I mean, it's the, 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 I have to have a Rasha in order to do the mitzvah, in order to do the mitzvah properly. I don't think so. I think that when you tell the story, you have to tell the story so that it includes the vantage point of the chacham, which is what do you have to do? What are the parameters? What's the, what are the halachot that have to be controlled? But also, everybody knows that I'm sometimes I'm, I'm not what I should be. And sometimes I'm a rasha a little bit. And that being, and being a rasha, Is about exclusion, right? You see it in the Haggadah, Ma'avodazot Lachem. What does this do for you? Lachem below low. Not, not him. So everybody has that feeling sometimes. There is a, after, after the night, say, how was your Seder? How was your Seder? Oh, my Seder was just fine, but usually you're referring to the potatoes and the meat that you had and not to the hot butter that you said. So that everybody, everybody might find himself playing the roles of the Chacham and the Rasha. If you just look at yourself very carefully, Tam and Sheino Yudei Lishol, you'll see that the mitzvah of Visipata Levincha, the mitzvah, let me just... It's a little bit more complicated than we thought it was. And we look at it as though all the fathers are the same and all the children are the same. But that's um, an unfortunate idea, partially because it's not true and partially because it's ineffective. It doesn't help. So the Sipu Yitziad Mitzrayim, it's not a propaganda push. It's not a way of getting certain basic ideas on the table. 
but it is rather a way to deal with problems that children very often have and find that their parents are not willing or able to deal with. And so, the Sipu Yitziat Mitzrayim is, is about a great achievement that B'nai Israel had when they left Mitzrayim. And it indicates that that achievement has to be copied again and again in order for Am Yisrael to continue, continue to exist. Because the belief in God and the belief in uh, Yitziat Mitzrayim are fundamental to the uh, way we understand the world that we, we live in. And if you don't have that, you're not part of Am Yisrael, as, as the Sheino uh, Yodei L'Shol, uh, I'm sorry, the Rasha, the Rasha says, This is why God took me out of Mitzrayim. Leave a low, low. It's hidden. It's hidden there. The Rasha is hidden in the Pasuk. But it's it's uh, true that leave a low, low describes the Rasha. It says that there are people who don't want to be included. They don't want to be part of what we are, what we are doing, even though they are certainly deserve to be part of it. So we looked at a little bit of the Haggadah, not too much, but you see the Haggadah has surprises. And if you are able to uh, allow yourself to be surprised, you might find it a worthy enterprise. A worthy enterprise. It's a little bit early still, but I wish you all a happy Pesach. And remember, if you have any shyness about the topics connected to Pesach, chametz, matzah, cleanliness, sipo yitziad mitzrayim, the timing of things. In all of these cases, you should consult your local rabbi. All the best to you all. Be well. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much.